A reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, beginning at verse 5. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and, being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is an interesting passage in many ways because it mentions and it's really based around an Old Testament figure named Melchizedek. And Melchizedek is a rather marginal figure. If you were to look for him in the Old Testament, you'd find him mentioned in Genesis 14 and he's mentioned once in the Psalms quoted here in this passage. But it's fair to say he's not a central figure and he's only really known to us from this passage towards the end of Genesis chapter 14. And in this passage, he appears to Abraham, and he appears to Abraham, and he blesses Abraham, and then Abraham gives him a tenth of everything. This is quite suggestive in a number of ways. First of all, there is no lineage given to Melchizedek. He just appears And remember, the book of Genesis is all about lineages. It's all about who begat whom. But yet Melchizedek appears from nowhere, as if he's some sort of eternal figure. And his name, Melchizedek, means king of righteousness. And that's interesting. And we also see that his rule, his reign is over Salem. Salem means peace. Shalom means peace. And of course, Jerusalem is the city of peace. So this is all rather interesting. We've got this figure who appears from nowhere. And we have this figure who is described as the king of Salem, the king of peace. And we have, moreover, somebody who's named the king of righteousness. And then Abraham is blessed by him. Well, this too is significant because the greater person blesses the lesser person. That's the logic of so much of the Old Testament. And when Abraham then gives him, Melchizedek, a tenth of everything, well, that shows yet more clearly that Melchizedek is the greater figure. Remember, priests are given a tithe. God is given a tithe. So, This is showing some submission by Abraham to Melchizedek. And then let me ratchet it up even more when I remind you that Abraham is the person from whom the rest of the Jewish race derives itself. Abraham sits at the very top of that great lineage which contains all of the tribes of Israel. And this gets us to the core of something important and significant. Because Jesus, in this reading from Hebrews, is being described as a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, quoting from the Psalms. And then at the end of that passage from Hebrews, it is put once more. It says he's been designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And this gets us around a bit of a tricky problem. You'll know that Jesus is from the line of David. And that's great because that is the regal, the royal line. But Jesus also operates as a priest. He is the one who stands between us and God. He is the great high priest. But he's not from the priestly line because that's the line of Levi, which is another line entirely. So how do we get around that? we get around that because Jesus comes from this earlier line of Melchizedek. And so he comes from an earlier and a greater 
line. He comes from this eternal line of Melchizedek, the one whom even Abraham knelt before for a blessing. This shows that Jesus is the great high priest par excellence. He is the one who is both both priest and king. He alone is the one who can bring us back to God. He is the only one who can stand between us and God. In the end, it's no good looking for earthly priests for any answers. The only one who can represent you fully before God is Jesus Christ, the high priest after the order of Melchizedek.